It was a normal day for Cosmic Afro. He got out of bed. Brushed his hair. And combed his teeth. And, like all hardworking human beings, cried for so long in the shower, it was hard to tell where the water and his pity began. <laughs> Fresh and anew, hiding the turmoil of defeat underneath his skin, he was ready once again to discuss the pyro. The following video is not for the removal or keeping of random crits. This video serves as an analysis point for how a class is individually affected. Thank you for understanding. See, the Pyro's whole kit is that he's supposed to be an obstacle that you are supposed to overcome, and he will obliterate you if you do not pay attention. But otherwise, he's pretty harmless, right? Right? But you see, the Pyro, when it comes to random crits, rarely benefits from his own random crit damage. But Cosmic, it's me, the average commenter. Whenever the Pyro has random crits in his flamethrower, I instantly die if I'm in range. That's a good point, alternative me, that my therapist told me to ignore because I was often talking too much in public spaces and said a lot of things that I didn't actually mean to say. <gasps> but the Pyro deals in short range damage, and unlike the Scout, it's damage over time, which means that it doesn't scale nearly as well as the other two classes that we've discussed in the series that you can check out in the description below. While in a capable pub setting, the Pyro is going to be outputting enough damage to actually make that happen, in a competitive level, he's not going to be ambushing enough to really make use of random crits if random crits did exist in pubs. But I will say this, my average commentator. But your bold head has freckles on it now? Stop staring at my head! Uh, the Pyro does have one unique thing when it comes to random crits that no other class has that we do need to keep in mind. He is the only class in Team Fortress 2 that can take one class's random crits and turn them into his own random crits. Provided that the critical damage is from a projectile weapon, the Pyro can turn the enemy team's damage into his own damage while also protecting the team behind him or in front of him from what otherwise would have been a very costly death. So while the Pyro may not be the most effective when it comes to random crits with his own personal kit, the fact that he can take any projectile weapon and turn it against the enemy team for his own benefit means that he is one of the classes, probably in third or fourth place on that matter, that benefits the most from random crits existing. Another thing that we should consider of the flare fighting, fire frequenting, fraudulent flogging, and flank fortificationizer man is that even if random crits do not exist, he is still one of the best combo classes in the game. He has more crit options than any other class. Any flamethrower works with any flare gun. The flare combos with itself for critical damage. The backburner gives immediate crits, provided that he can flank behind the enemy team and get away with it. And let's not forget the degreaser, which is the ultimate combo machine to ever exist in the first place, right? And the pyro also has the man melter, which is a weapon that exists, but nobody uses it because it requires another class to exist on the enemy team to even be remotely useful. The man melter exists, just nobody uses it. It's a bad weapon. Why do they hate the Man Melter? Let's not forget that he is the only class with a weapon that is specific to wet players, which means he works extremely well with Mad Milk, Jurati, and Epic Gamer tiers. So, it would seem as though with random crits existing, Pyro only stands to benefit with them being around, right? However, I'm going to say that it's actually the opposite of that, and that Pyro is going to be the first class in the series that doesn't necessarily want random crits to exist, for the following reasons. As I mentioned previously, the Pyro is an ambushing class, and there's something very striking that the Pyro and the Spy have very similar with. All of the attention is drawn towards them. While a spy can turn around and run invisibly across the map and not really draw that much attention to him, the pyro definitely doesn't have any of the same thing. 
In fact, his most mobile item, which is the jetpack, makes an extremely loud jet-bearing noise, and it's really hard to ignore that that thing exists. This, however, means that since the pyro can be mobile, but it makes a lot of noise or draws a lot of attention to him, that a singular random crit can undo 10 to 30 seconds worth of work that the pyro had to take in order to get to his ambush spot in the first place. What I am trying to get at here is that if random crits do not exist in the first place, the pyro can still make a lot of crit and mini crit combos on his own. And he has the air blast in order to turn projectiles into his own mini crits and protect his own team. If random crits do not exist, nothing changes about the pyro. He stays completely the same and does not change at all with random crits existence or not. In fact, I would dare to say that pub pyros benefit far more when random crits don't exist because then they can do their job properly and the combos that they do receive a buff because they are able to get that stuff more consistently and by default becomes a more powerful class, especially in close range. I also need to make mention that his flank roots become more viable because even if, even if, if the pyro is noticed on his routine, he has a chance to survive an instant headshot from a sniper with his base 175 HP pool, and he won't be immediately decimated by people who go for the, you know, pray to God, random crit destruction of the melee since his health is at an awkward 175. So that's basically it for the pyro. While I think many people might find that it's surprising to hear that I think that pyros would benefit more with random crits not existing, or based on how many people die to pyros and their random crits, especially when the flamethrower just crits and destroys everything, but as far as I played this past week in order to get footage for the pyro, I so rarely got random crits that when it did happen, it was unfortunately when I was spy checking a lot, and I didn't really get to use it a whole lot. And while I don't expect my one example to be an entire representation of TF2, I do want to say that as objectively as possible, if random crits don't exist, the pyro benefits a lot more simply because he's able to be far more consistent with his own playstyle. Thank you so much for listening, I do appreciate you, and thank you for putting one foot in front of the other and continuing to go on with your day, and not just your day, but your life. I hope that you set a goal for yourself this next week, and you try to reach that goal. Not something grand, not something fantastic, but a small goal that I know you can do. And you want to know how I know? Because I know that you know that you can do it. And since you know that I know that you know that you can do it, you know that I know you know you can do it. So you know that you can do it. Alright. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys hopefully next week. Bye-bye.